Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a quick review for you of this little guy. This is the Kyocera Wide Barrel Executive Pen. Um, in the bronze version here, it's called the KB15 NBR. Um, first off, though, I want to thank my buddy Chris for uh, tipping me off on this guy, and in fact, donating this little guy to the channel. Um, this is an interesting pen. I wouldn't have come across it otherwise, and so that's that's really kind of him. Thanks, Chris. Um, next thing, let's do a little bit of a size comparison right quick. Um, here it is against... Uh, a standard bit click stick sort of pen. Here it is against a generalized Sharpie style marker. Here it is against one of my very favorite pens here. This is the um, uh, Machine Era Classic um, pocket size pen. As you can see, this is a, a reasonably sized pen here. I mean, it, it's it's full size and a little bit wider than usual, so it fills the hand well. Um, and there, there's your size comparison. Then finally, a quick note. Um, you may be thinking to yourself, what the heck kind of cartridge with Kyocera? What? Um, yeah, Kyocera, I, I know them as a phone maker from the 90s, but um, they're <laughs> apparently around and making phones, or uh, making pens still. Um, but that uses this weird refill, the Kyocera Ceramic Roller Refill, the C300. Um, interesting refill, and uh, yeah, so that's what we got going on here. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting pen right here. So on the good side, honestly, it's a nicely finished pen. I mean, if we take a look at it here, it looks substantially nice. I mean, this whole thing feels metallic. Maybe it's a metal-coated plastic. Maybe it's actually metal. Whatever it is, it looks great. Um, and, it, and it feels nice in the hand. It is just like it's substantially relatively smooth. It's well polished. It's well done. This is just a beautifully made pen here. I mean, looking at this guy... Yeah, that's nice. Um, and so that that's good. Um, in addition, you get this polished metal area under here, as well as an area that's sort of a rubbery grip to it, which honestly feels really nice in the hand. Um, ergonomically speaking, whether you're writing posted or unposted, although it's a little more comfy post uh, unposted, that is, um, this just feels great. And so uh, overall, the, the body of this guy, coupled with this rubber grip, it just it's it's a nice little body here. Um, next thing, the snap on this guy, and it's a weird thing to talk about, but this. That's nice, because it takes a fair amount of effort to get undone, takes a fair amount of effort to do, um, and it feels convincing. You always know that it's been seated in there, and carrying this guy around in my pocket, actually in my pants pocket, hanging by the clip, which is a good test to see if the clip is, I'm sorry, if the, um, the, the, the cap is going to stay on, absolutely no trouble. So that's, that's very nice. Ergonomically speaking, it writes very nicely. Um, it is a very smooth pen here. Uh, see, I can write very smooth. Well, there I was writing very smooth, but you know what? Smooth is cool too. But it writes well, and there's no real sign of cutouts or anything like that. Um, it's it's just it is nice. It writes substantially well. It's one of the nicest roller balls I've had around on the channel. Um, and I would say it compares really nicely to your Mont Blanc style roller balls. Um, it's it's very very nicely there. And honestly, it was a pen that was a joy to use. Anytime I was using it, it was just like, you know, yeah. That's what I said right there, yeah. Um, although there it was, uh, you know, slower, so it was like, yeah. Anyways, whatever, uh, that, that, that's beside the point. Um, and then, so that all to me is the good here, is that it is a very nicely finished, uh, finished, finished pen, uh, which is very, very smooth. It's a nice writer, absolutely. It writes well. Ergonomically speaking, it writes very nicely. It just feels good in the hand. The overall, ba uh, overall weight is good. The balance is good. Oh, the weight I should probably actually measure for you. Coming in here at 1.23 ounces. Nice. No complaints there. Um, and it is just very, very nicely finished. To me, what's really great about this pen, though, is that it is it feels nicer than the price suggests. This is a, a pen that feels substantially excellent. You take this out, and people are going to be like, oh, that's pretty nice. Um, maybe with the exception of the, 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 the typing here, which maybe looks a little more down market, this looks like a higher-end pen. But the cost of it is 22 bucks. And that's not bad at all. Considering you're getting really good writing, a really nice body on it, it's just good ergonomics, this is a pretty good value, I gotta say. And so, to me, that's what's great, is that, pardon me, this just feels like a pen that is batting way above its pay grade. It's way nicer than the price would otherwise make you think. So, to me, that's what's great. On the uh, on the bad side, there's not much bad here. Um, to start with, the uh, ramp on the clip isn't all that great. You can see here that when we look, yeah, there's just barely a little bit of gap in there. Um, it's enough that you can get it over your pants pocket. It's enough that you can get it into a shirt pocket, but you're probably not going to love the process. So there you go. Um, next thing, if you look at the tip of this guy carefully, um, you can see that there are little kind of voids here. I'll zoom in a little bit. 
There we go. You can see there are little tiny, you know, inconsistencies in the surface finish. And even if I, you know, clean this off very specifically so that you can see this isn't dust or anything like that, there are little inconsistencies, little dings, etc. in the finish here. It looks like this was poured rather than, you know, machined or anything like that. Um, and so as a result, that's kind of the one area where this looks a little bit lower budget than well, actually, it's the one area where it looks like it's the price it should be, uh, or it is. Um, and so that's a, that's a minor issue. Um, and, you know, really, I'm not a big fan of the text. And the other thing is that uh, the, the, the threading here. You can hear this. Yeah, it's kind of ugly. The threading to undo this guy doesn't feel substantially good. But again, is that a big deal? No, not really. And so um, that to me is the bad, is that the threading isn't very good. Um, it, it, the, uh, the, the, the writing here is a little bit kind of like, oh, well, that, that, that was looking pretty good. Um, the, the ramp isn't great on the clip, and there are some casting issues at the tip, but it's 22 bucks, so okay, whatever. Um, on the ugly front, there is one ugly issue, and that is the cartridge. Um, look, the cartridge writes beautifully. It's, it's great, but it's very esoteric. I was able to find a a supply of these guys on Amazon for three for 18 bucks, which is only very slightly cheaper than a uh, Mont Blanc original refill sort of thing. Um, but I was only able to find black colored ink and I wasn't able to find them anywhere else. Actually, it's not true. I found them. You could order them through Kayacera and there they were like four bucks a piece, but then shipping wasn't included. Um, and even then I couldn't find anything other than black. And so what this basically means is that although you can get cartridges for this guy, which is nice, um, they are going to be relatively expensive and they're going to be very hard to find. One advantage to a Mont Blanc pen is that even if you say you're traveling for business or something like that, you run out of cartridges and you forgot to bring one, chances are if you go to an office supply sort of store, you go to a pen shop, you go to a Mont Blanc store, depending where you're at, um, you can scare up a Mont Blanc cartridge or something vaguely compatible, uh, whereas with this guy, unfortunately, you really can't. And so, although it writes beautifully, it's got that big asterisk hanging over it, which is that you're only going to get this in black, and that, uh, yeah, that's that's a bit of an issue. So, um, to me, that that, that is ugly. Um, anytime you have an esoteric cartridge, it just makes, and if Kaiosera stops making this cartridge... Eh, your pen's gone. So, um, you know, that, that that's the ugly, is that the cartridge is pretty esoteric and a little bit on the pricey side, and uh, hope you like black ink. Um, so, final conclusions. Look, I, I, I'm a little torn here. I mean, at some level, this is a substantially nice pen. It is a very nice writer. It is a very nice price. There's really not much to complain about here. If you're looking at this like, wow, that's pretty, and you're willing to pay the price for the weird cartridges then you know what? Do it. And in fact, that's really the issue, is that the refill thing. I mean, a great pen is a terrible pen when it's empty, and a bronze pen writing black ink is not necessarily going to be the thing everybody wants. And when you're at this kind of a refill price, you're quite nearly in Mont Blanc territory anyways, so you might consider just getting a pen that uses though instead. Um, but the thing is, at the same time, the refill is great. I can't really get... I, I just don't know. It all depends on how much you value that one particular issue. If you're willing to stock up on an esoteric refill for a couple of is, then sure, go for it. Why not? Um, uh, but uh, aside from that, I don't know. Maybe I'm just weird in wanting that easy replaceability, but, um, you know, it, it is what it is. So I guess my final conclusion here is that I'm a little torn. The pen is beautiful. It is quite nice, but it's also limited and it is quite niche. And only you're going to know whether this pen ultimately offers you the right stuff. Uh -huh. Anyways, hope this has been interesting to you and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.